Matt Latimer, how are you, sir? I'm fine. How are you? Hello to everybody in Tucson. Oh, uh, you know, let me just start off by saying that I've always told Senator Kyle I want to have a beer with him because I, I like Kyle. He's one of the only guys I've ever liked, and, I, and I, I'm hoping that there's not some secret behind him that would make me not like him. But now I don't have to. I can have the beer with you. I actually write about my time working for Senator Kyle in my book, Speechless, and I do have a big secret about Senator Kyle that I reveal in the book. Oh, you know, I read enough of the book, but not that, Scott. I mean, Matt. <laughs> I mean, Matt. Uh, Mrs. Kyle called him Scott by accident. I read that part. <laughs> but, no, I like Senator Kyle enormously. He's a great person and a, a true, uh, true principled leader and, and uh, a, a kind of the kind of person I wanted to be in Washington. Well, I got to tell you, your your McCain stories are fantastic. Matt Latimer wrote for well, he wrote for Bush, he wrote for Rummy, but when you talk about Arizona, I've been here eleven years now. It's just classic stuff because Kyle with the old truck and you being alone <laughs> with McCain. So let me just ask you flat out because everybody asks me this: Does John McCain really talk like a truck driver, sailor kind of guy? Uh, I had a few interactions with him, but he was. Um... He had a, a very kind of jock frat boy type of sense of humor, and um, it was often, I found, at other people's expense, but he could be quite funny unless you're the butt of his joke. But you survived him. You survived. So I, I know you can't say this, but is Kyle one of the most honest elected officials you've met or, or not? John Kyle is a person that I wanted to meet in Washington. He is somebody who is a principal public servant, a good person. He is honest, hardworking. I mean, he really, I mean, I used to remember days, you know, I worked for him in his office in Washington where on... Wait, what's he doing in Washington then? <laughs> I don't know how he survives. <laughs> all right, look, you know, you, at the beginning of this book, you lay out something very important I think we can all relate to that got into some kind of line of work like yours. You wanted that fulfillment. You wanted to feel good that you were helping the the country, and you wanted to feel that Washington was honest and just. And well, you wanted a lot of things you didn't get, I was, and you you felt that he was really doing a fine job. I I, I respected him a lot. Um, I started a week before this office for jobs. Well, how do you do a book like this and keep your friends? Never mind your jobs. What? Well, give me some fallout, <laughs> Matt. Did anyone? I mean, McCain, as you say in the book, will have no shyness about calling people directly who've written about him. Has anyone uh, given you any grief? You know, my friends are still my friends. Um, my book is basically a conservative look at Washington. And if you're a principled conservative in Washington, or if you're a principled person in general, even if you're a liberal, I don't think you, I don't have a problem with you in my book. I mean, the people that I talk about in my book were people who were Republicans first and conservatives second and tended to get seduced by power and privilege instead of what they were elected for. And frankly, I don't care what they think about me. Well, Matt, you depressed me a little bit when I read some of this because uh, you confirmed what a lot of people have told me that Washington is run by a lot of young people who are in their first and second jobs. They don't really know politics yet, that a lot of the big power people that we think are making decisions sit in an office somewhere, don't really even come out in some cases. Uh, it's a little scary. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that going on in Washington. You know, I talk about in my book a U.S. senator who uh, had a taxpayer-funded person walk around carrying her purse around Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. And I talk about another U.S. senator who brags about his imaginary conversations with an imaginary family that he's made up in his head. Oh, <laughs> That's my just, Those are kind of the people that work in Washington. Well, how do you think when the media is putting out what what appears to be factual images of these people that we look up to in some cases – you made the point that almost all of our the public descriptions of these people are not accurate. Is there something we should know? Well, a lot of the people that I saw in the White House in particular, uh, that I saw firsthand, came across differently than the media conventional wisdom is. For example, um, President Bush was smarter and funnier than he probably was generally characterized by the media. He wasn't a particularly curious person, and he was very confident and self-assured. That's true. But um, he was funny, and, and he had good political sense. Um, Vice President Cheney, who everybody sort of depicts as this co-president who was always in the shadows plotting the next uh, takeover of some foreign country, was actually, when I was there, somewhat divorced from what was happening at the White House, at least it seemed to me, and uh, the White House tended to gravitate towards Condi Rice and others against the Vice President. Now, I know what I read of Condi Rice in your book is very flattering. Um, tell us about Reagan. President Reagan? Yes. I never worked for him, but I admired him a great deal. I mean, is, is that how you saw yourself when you went in? Did you judge everybody by that kind of a conservative? Well, you know, there's only one Ronald Reagan, but I did like, what I liked about him was 
and Margaret Thatcher was the same way, as a matter of fact. These are people who believed in conservative principles. Sometimes they had to make compromises. Sometimes they had to do things that they weren't happy about to get things done in Washington. But they stuck to what they believed in. They didn't let Washington change them. And they left pretty much as conservative as, as when they came uh, to their well, to, to Washington or to their capital cities. And, and uh, I wanted leaders who were like that. I wanted to elect people who, I mean, even if you're a liberal, you want to elect people who say they represent us, and then they go to Washington and they stay that way instead of getting changed by, you know, all the powers and perks and privileges of the, of the town. See, now I'm going to want to go back and look at some of the speeches you were involved in. But let me ask you this. I mean, uh, I, I watched Mario Cuomo give speeches that brought tears to my eyes. I watched Reagan do it several times, brought tears to my eyes. Everybody brags about this president being a great speaker. I think he's a smooth talker, and I'm, I'm not being partisan, Matt, about this. Right. I, I, I don't, he never, his eyes never well up. He never tugs my heartstrings. He never has ever done any of that to me. He's just smooth. Um, yeah. Can you agree with that, or am I not seeing what the rest of the people are saying? Well, I, I honestly, I, I, in 2008, I thought he was a really good speaker, and there were some of his speeches that people at the White House would print out and read, even though, you know, we didn't support him politically. But I can't remember, really, since he's been president, uh, President Obama, one memorable speech that he's given. Um, he gives a lot of speeches that sound nice, but they don't really say much. And when you give speech after speech after speech over and over again, it sort of diminishes the presidential voice and makes it a little bit stale. And I'm worried that he's going to become overexposed by all this media he's doing all the time. Well, and the book is called Speechless, Matt Latimer, and I could go on for about 10 hours with you, Matt. But last question for you. Are we, are we on the conservative side uh, being paranoid when we talk about socialism and that kind of thing? Uh, or is this something that should be on the front burner? Well, uh, I'm skeptical. After what I saw in Washington, and one of the things I talk about in my book is the financial crisis that almost ended capitalism as we know it and led to these bailouts and everything, um, I tend to be someone very skeptical of expanding power in Washington because I was in Washington, and as my book will chronicle, I saw the people who are running our country, and the last thing I want to do is give them more authority and more control and more oversight over different aspects of our of our way of life. So um, socialism, I don't know if it's the right word, but the encroachment of the federal government is certainly a position that the other party tends to have, and it's something that I'm very skeptical of. Now, when you hear and friends of yours, coworkers, acquaintances, say, uh, well, I like this guy or I don't like this guy, but you, with your personal experience, you really know which one is the better person. Um, <laughs> is it frustrating? Um, you know, um, it is frustrating sometimes to hear people talk about people that I know or work with or admired in a way that is not the way that I see them. But, you know, some people are saying that about me. It's different than what I actually tried to do in my book. And, you know, that's just how politics is, unfortunately, and you get used to it. Well, I'll tell you what, I, 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 I'm not going to sleep after I read the rest of your book. I know that, but, uh, <laughs> but I'll enjoy it anyway. Speechless, Matt Latimer, thank you for uh, adjusting your time with us, sir, and for being on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Very, very cool.